Welcome back to Overtime, and I'm here to teach you kids a little something about Rocket League. Now, we talk about a lot of teams, and we talk about a lot of metas, and the meta's getting faster and faster and faster as days go on, and these players improve in skill. Now, we don't really get to see a lot of the decisions that are being made or how they're putting this pressure on and getting this fast pace in the heat of the moment, especially in full time. So I want to break down a couple of plays for you guys just to show you exactly what these players do. Now, the first team I want to talk about is G2. Now, they went against NRG in the Brisk Summer Series, and they completely stomped him. A complete sweep, which you really don't see very often, especially against NRG, our online champions. I want to show you exactly how G2 kept up the pace and how they make their decisions in the finite moments during this play. Now, this starts off with a passing play of NRG. Fireburner tries to take a shot, and a good position from JNAPS will actually allow him to clear it all the way out. Kronobi follows through, and you'll actually watch him make an attempt at a bump on Jacob as well. Really wants to get a lot of value out of it. Now, last second, he sees this boost, he wants to go for it, it's not there, but then he, and he also probably wants to contest it, but he notices that Rizzo has a better shot, a better angle to contest, and can stop the ball there in the 50-50 with Jacob. JNAPS is going to gain control and again, just try and gain more ground. He's going to jump off the wall last second, get a good contest against Jacob, and keep it on their backboard. Now, signature Spider-Man clear from Fireburner. We know how great he is at him. He's essentially trying to hit it out to the side, either hit the corner of the, po or the, corner of the map and let it roll forward, or it's going to bounce off the side and his teammate's going to come clear it. Now, we see little baby Rizzo down here. He's going to try and take the risky play. And this is generally what happens when you're going for fast pace. You have to take a little bit of risk. He wants to read this touch as quickly as possible and try and get it before he can get a hard clear. Now, what's pretty insane is that you're actually going to watch Rizzo not only read it, but hop off the wall and actually get there before the ball bounces off. Really impressive from him. Kronobi there again for yet another contest. Now, one more decision made by Rizzo that's actually really impressive. You'll see him take off ball cam for a quarter of a second, line himself up with the side boost, and get ready to retreat. But what does he notice? He actually notices that there's nobody behind the ball. No one can get a hard clear here. And Jacob, if you'll notice, is actually facing the wrong way. He's facing out towards the midfield. So he's not in a great place to clear this. At the last second, you'll actually watch Rizzo change his front flip to a diagonal flip and try and contest Jacob, who gets a tad bit greedy, thinking he has time and goes for boost. He gets beat up by Rizzo, and then yet again, another contest coming in. JNAP reading Rizzo, even though he took that split decision to turn around for it. Jacob, feeling under pressure, goes up for this as quickly as he can, but no one was there. They were actually able to put so much pressure on, they felt like they needed to contest it. Kronobi gets juiced up, gets some more boost, passes it back to Rizzo, who clears it right over Garrett, and now Jacob has one decision to make. Is Rizzo going to take the quick shot off of the crossbar, or is he going to wait until the last second? Now, since they had just done so much in such a short period of time, Jacob assumed that Rizzo would try and pinch it in over the crossbar for the difficult save, but instead he waits the last second and drops it underneath Jacob, which is something that only these players would be able to execute in just split-second thinking. Now, we've talked a lot about LAN, and we talked a lot about Northern Gaming and how amazing their showing was in the Season 3 LAN Finals. They were able to get a reset. They had to play two best-of-sevens back-to-back, and they still took it. Now, I could take an eagle's eye view of their plays and just show you everything that happened, and probably we could highlight an entire game, five minutes, which would take me about 60 minutes up here. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to show you what happens when three players make perfect decisions back to back to back and how it results in a goal. Now, you, these players, even though they were using a sub of Turbo Pulse, so they were still so confident in all their decisions. Devo turning around quickly for that contest. Even though he wasn't technically next in line, he knew he was the, the next best for that. Now we're going to watch Remco slow this down. Now this is what good players can usually pull off. They know when it's a good time to slow the ball down or speed it up and get a hard clear. Now Remco has Fairy Peak screaming down the middle to ready for this contest. And now Kadop is coming from the side. Kadop knows he doesn't have a great angle and at best it would pinch off the side, come back out. Fairy Peak has a much harder angle at that to potentially dunk it over Remco. Now Remco could have gone for the hard clear, smash it up to the, cross, or to the backboard, but he doesn't. He actually baits Fairy Peak entirely. Knowing he loses 50-50, he hits it into Kadop instead, trying to gain corner ground. And there Devo is yet again to help continue this pressure so they don't lose control. Now one more time, we're going to watch Kadop come up for this. Kadop came from the bottom right corner of the map, so he doesn't have a really hard hit on this. You'll see that he's air rolled, he's completely sideways. He wants to hit the ball on the side and send it off to the side. Now look at where Turbo's actually contesting this from. He's technically missing on the trajectory, but he knows what Kadop wants to do. He's in his head, he wants to figure it out, and he knows that Kadop wants to center this so they can turn it right back around for a counterattack. He doesn't even air roll his car because he wants to hit it with the bottom of his car gently to drop it right back mid. And the moment he does, there's Remco yet again. Now, you can already see it. This is Fairy Peak's boost rail. He wants to get this hard clear. He's already tried to pre-jump it. He's going to try and read it as it comes across net. And most players would see the top of this net right here and say, I want to put it up to the crossbar. Always the hardest things to save. 
But Remco, again, last second makes the perfect decision to wait. Knowing Fairy Peak went for the pre-jump and tried to get the clear and drops it right underneath him. Now this was just one tiny portion of what these players did. In two best of seven series back to back to back, they were able to do so much, so many games. Well, I guess it was just back to back, but if we talk about games, there was so much more they had to execute. I could break down that entire series for three hours and maybe if you guys request it and you guys want to put up with me long enough, I'll do it sometime in the future. But when we come back, we're actually going to get to take a look into the history of Gibbs and a little bit of the history of Rocket League, so don't go anywhere.